special day. I want to talk about the gospel reading. Um, if you haven't been to a church lately, this isn't the way it's looked for the last two and a half years, okay? I'm just being honest with you. This is probably more people than we've had for a long time. The churches have been empty. And I called up uh, three of my colleagues uh, uh, across Regina, and uh, every church is experiencing the same thing. There's already preliminary discussion in uh, how the churches in Regina are going to move forward. The Anglican churches, uh, uh, the bishop declared that five of them are going to close, and now they're worshiping under one roof uh, by Campbell Collegiate. At the, they call it Emmanuel uh, Anglican Church now. But there's already a discussion how we are going to survive going forward. Are two or three of us going to have together, going to get together and come into one space? We definitely could fit three churches and the people who are worshiping, bring them in together. I'm playing around with a, an idea that maybe uh, in the newspaper I will put in an uh, advertisement, or just a statement, declaring who we are and welcoming people from other, uh, other denominations who are no longer worshiping, or people who maybe want to experience uh, the Christian faith in a new way. But I'll tell you something, that if I print something out, I'm not gonna include the words from the gospel, okay? Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even life itself cannot be my disciple. I've preached about this for uh, 40 some years, and uh, I've always come up with something. And today I stand before you and say, I don't know what those words mean, but I don't think that's what Jesus meant, okay? We have enough problems in our lives. We don't need to hate anybody any more than what we might already. And we definitely don't need to hate our families. Families are the bedrock of our lives. In almost all the counseling and the helping that I do, people, are suffering and in pain because there is family conflict or their childhoods were rife with family conflict. People arguing or fighting, people divorcing, people in addiction or people leaving. So I don't believe that these are the words. I do believe the last words and I'm not gonna put those in the paper either. So therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all of your possessions. Very strong, very harsh words, 
And uh, I don't necessarily believe them, but I understand what Jesus is saying. Is that we get too involved in the things of this world. And that's what's happening, isn't it? That's why the churches aren't full anymore. That's why churches are closing. Okay, in the rural areas, they're closing all the time. And then the cities are going to happen too. We're getting too involved in the materialistic world. And we don't have the time. We don't see the purpose of having a faith, sharing the faith, developing a faith community, and singing the spiritual songs. I know that you people feel that it's important. That's why you're here today. What Jesus does say is this. For which of you attending uh, to build a tower uh, does not sit down first and estimate the cost as to whether he has enough to complete it. Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule. The church needs to lay a sound foundation. Okay? And the sound foundation that we lay is not going to be based on the law. Okay? The first words that Jesus spoke were the law. And the Bible is filled with law, legalistic terminology. Thou shalt do this, thou shalt not do that. That's not the foundation of our faith in this Lutheran church. The foundation of our faith is grace. It's the gospel. The foundation of Jilly's faith, and she's just looking right at me here. <laughs> she's taking it all in. The foundation is the gospel. It's love. And somehow over the years, the Christian church has forgotten that. We've forgotten that love is the foundation of our faith. It's not all of these other things, the shall do's and shall not do's. It's not the words about damnation and hell. How many of you grew up and listened to confirmation class that whoever was not baptized will not receive eternal life. Right? And did that make any sense to you at the time? You didn't dare question the pastor though, did you? No, I, I thought about it and I, I looked at his stern countenance and I, no, nah, just keep your mouth shut like your dad always tells you to. Okay? And so I tell people that when we have a baptism, this is not to save the child from eternal damnation. Okay? That we cannot have this as our foundation. Nobody's going to buy it, A, and it's not true, B. It's just not true. We do baptism now out of gratitude. We lift up the gratefulness that we have. We are thanking God for this gift of life. And the longer we can do that, the longer we can be grateful and lift this gratitude up every day, the stronger she will be and the happier she will be in her life. It's the foundation of the church. It's the foundation of our families. It's how we stick together. Love, understanding, acceptance, and forgiveness. And it's how Jill has a full life. The foundation of love. Amen.